I just want to do a little introduction on thinking about the differences between year 11 and sixth form. Um, and it really is that step along the path that we talked about before. Um, but really, it's then a little bit more about uh, how we step back a little bit and you start to lead. And that process, as Mr. Larson was saying earlier, that kind of starts now with you owning your own revision, owning your own learning. And then when we get to the sixth form, it's definitely much more uh, incumbent upon you. You will have bit more uh, latitude in terms of your own time and managing that uh, is going to be the thing that sets you up uh, for what happens when you leave school. So um, we do have uh, an emphasis not just upon academic success and I'm sure Ms. Christie will talk about this later on in terms of the wider enrichment, the wider participation. We do want uh, young people that leave Hitchin Boys School to be more than just a set of exam results to have a really good understanding about the world around them, but also to have played sport at a great level, participated in creative arts, uh, got involved in one of our groups, whether that's our uh, race equality group or LGBT group or whatever the interest there might be to show school leadership as well as just uh, study for their subjects. So it's a really um, exciting opportunity to become an adult and for us to help you uh, along that way. Um, I think you've all heard me bang on about the values. Um, it's been probably the thing that I've pushed the most in assembly since I've been head here. Um, but what I'd say is lower down the school, I talk much more about uh, respect and kindness and teamwork. But when we get to sixth form, we're actually moving more towards the left-hand side. And that's why we separated out these three values of ambition, responsibility and resilience. Because it's really then that you're taking more ownership over your own goals, uh, your own ambitions, your own lives, and school then becomes a little bit more of a partnership uh, for us all to help you to achieve that. Um, we will again talk about this much more uh, if you join us in the sixth form, but um, we have this uh, idea of a, a model called VESPA, and without going into the intricate details of it now, it is something about this A-level mindset, this way of thinking, this way of working, uh, that sets it apart from uh, just school. So it's a, a model that we use to help uh, you manage uh, your study time and manage uh, time outside of uh, lessons to make that as effective as possible. Um, one thing to say that, yes, uh, students in sixth form do take part-time jobs, but um, don't think that being in sixth form is not equivalent to a full-time job. It, it, it is. Um, by the time you take part in your lessons, uh, and typically you'll have uh, 10 hours a fortnight, nine hours a fortnight of, uh, of teaching time. Um, but there is directed study time, there's EPQ, there's enrichment, there's lots of other things going on, uh, PhD form time, etc. Um, plus your independent study, you're looking at a 35 hour, 40 hour a week job. So yeah, on top of that, you can fit in some part-time work to, to earn money, but don't get the balance wrong um, because your priority needs to be uh, going towards school. Um, so we've already heard about consortium. Uh, really, the benefit of us working together across the three schools in Hitchin is that breadth of choice, um, 35 different subjects, uh, and we keep adding to that all the time as the sixth form grows. Uh, and we couldn't afford to run some of those subjects if we didn't work together in a consortium. But also the rich experiences that you have in visiting other schools, in working uh, you know, for the first time in some cases uh, in a co-educational setup. Yes, there are girls in your classes. Um, and that's quite a good change and step towards um, uh, university or, or employment. Um, I think, is that this handover point? Yeah, perfect. Um, so, that's just a little nugget from me, but uh, the, the real interesting stuff is going to come from Ms. Christie, who's our head of sick former hand over to Matt. Thank you for turning out this evening. Um, as a geographer, I like to describe this as optimum field trip weather. Uh, and sorry to my year 11 boys who've already had an hour of listening to me today. So it's just good to see some people here. So. Um, the sixth form. I'm incredibly excited about it. So my third year of running the sixth form now, um, and it's growing and it continues to grow. So we've got around about 280 students in our sixth form. 
It gives you lots of freedom. We've mentioned a lot of these things already. It's kind of that halfway house um, between you know, being in full-time education and then leaving and potentially uh, you know, maybe even living on your own, living independently. Somebody said to me once, they said, when students come in, they're only six weeks away from being year 11s, where you are now, and when they leave, they're six weeks away from being undergraduates. So there's a huge amount of change that happens in that time. Um, about 45% of our students are consorting students. So it's very likely uh, some of you here will have lessons off site. And generally speaking, they find that incredibly positive. There's so many pluses to taking some lessons at other schools, getting to know other people. Um, there are some downsides, the walk up Windmill Hill uh, being one of them. But generally speaking, it's something which students, as you've seen on the video, and we didn't prime them to say that, we have lots of students that, that consort from one place to another and find it really, really positive. We offer, as has been said, all, almost 40 different courses, and we're really excited to be running new courses here this year as well. Um, A-levels, diplomas, BTECs, and there's a bit of a change in climate with BTECs. It used to be something which perhaps was for students who couldn't necessarily get those more academic A-levels. There's more students than ever who are doing a mixture of BTECs and A-levels and going on to university and apprenticeships. So um, please don't think that they're not something that, you know, would be useful for you. They could definitely offer you something. Um, it's definitely worth for the students here thinking that um, despite the fact that you may really like a certain teacher that you have, you might not be taught by those teachers. You may not be with the same people that you sit next to for GCSE. And that might seem really obvious to you, but it could be different. And that's a good thing. It's a little bit of a, you know, a bit challenging. It's a little bit scary to start with, but you're going to have a chance to get to know lots of new people in the sixth form. So when you're choosing your subject, you need to think about what you actually enjoy doing. Because if you choose something, you're the person who has to do that for the next two years. So we'll give you lots more information about that. Lots of people have said, do you do careers? Do you do enrichment? What else do you offer apart from just subjects? Well, the answer to that is lots of things. And I won't stand here and list them all for you. Um, one thing that we have which is fairly new this year is we have something called directed study. So in amongst your between 27 or 36 hours, depending if you do three or four subjects that you have throughout the sixth form, you'll also have a lot of non-contact time, all right? Your free periods. And during that time, that's quite difficult when you go from 25 hours a week, full contact time, straight into the sixth form. Sometimes people find that quite difficult to manage. Anybody would. So we've introduced something this year, which is some supervised study in the morning, some information on things like how to reference, how to use the library correctly, how to, um, how to access and, and, and um, tackle those first assignments that come in. So there's a bit of sort of drip feeding of information in year 12 to help structure it. And then as we get into year 13, we tend to be a little bit more hands off, a little bit more freedom. The building changes. So they have a building which has a cafe, it has its dedicated work areas and so on. In that attempt to try and move you along to the more sort of seminar style of university or life beyond in doing jobs where you have to manage your own time. So there's lots of things on here, but the key thing is it is a lot of fun as well. You know, you, you, if, you, if you come to Hitchin Boys, you will probably be here with people that you have known for a long time, but we also welcome external students as well. So you've got a chance to get to know new people as well as people across the consortium and to get involved in things which perhaps you've never been involved in before. So there is a real chance to be kind of, you know, shape yourself as an individual when you come into the sixth form. These are some of the opportunities. Some of them are the same as year seven to 11. Some of them are things which are new. I just want to pick out a few things from here. One of the things I love the most is our English uh, department, which runs learning mentors, but we often refer to them as reading ninjas. They are fantastic. They are students in year 12, generally, who go and they listen to some of the weaker students in year seven read. That is a tremendously rewarding experience, but what we often find is it creates this really great bond. It's some, doing, giving something back within your school. You may have been, remember when you were that you know, shy year, year seven or you found things a bit difficult when you first came in, but it also helps you with some of those skills that you might need. So if you're interested in working with people in any capacity at all, having that chance to kind of work with some of the younger people in the school is a really rewarding thing. We have a lot of students this year, more than ever, I think there's 24 of them, that are going out into local primary schools and working with our local charity phase with a project called GROW. And it's working alongside some of the year fives and year sixes 
um, and talking to them about managing their emotions. So things like managing disappointment, you know, they're friendship groups. And to have students go in and to actually work with them is enjoyable on both sides. Often they like to go back to their old primary school so that their teachers can sort of say, you've grown so much and so on. But they really, really enjoy doing that. There's very high level things. So if you want to do an EPQ, it's the equivalent to half an A level. An EPQ is an extended project qualification. And you can do it on anything you like. So I've had a student in the past, they work on it throughout the year, you have a mentor, a little bit like you would at university, they built their own mountain bike from scratch, okay, not from a model, they talked me through all the different parts, how it would work, the design phase, the things that went wrong. The idea behind this is that you start to learn how to do research yourself, because that's what you will do either if you go into a job, you'll always have to be finding out about new things, or if you go into university. There is a chance to take part in Duke of Edinburgh, the gold scheme, or, or sometimes the bronze scheme. It depends on where you pick it up. There's a chance to be a mental health ambassador if you want to, and lots and lots of other things in here. And often, you are the person who is running the clubs when it comes to the sixth form, obviously with, under the supervision of the teachers, but you might be that very, very talented sportsman, and I know there's lots of you in here, who are helping out the younger students, coaching some of those teams. Right? Remember how important it was to you when you saw those older students helping you. This is not something that we make you do. If you want to get involved in this, you can, but virtually all of our students do something to do with enrichment. There's a lot of chances to lead. So you will have seen Farah already there, who is a part of our senior prefect team. We've got a, a thriving eco committee, uh, which is led by one of our prefects as well. We also have a strong house system. So you see our house flags. Um, you know, our house systems existed for I would think probably at least 100 years. The School Chronicle, which is a magazine, a newspaper that's existed for over 100 years. So a chance to be part of a legacy, something which is really important, some of the traditions that continue at our school. These are your facilities. So in year 12, and you are always welcome to come in and have a look around these, you will have your own dedicated sixth form building. This was originally built for year 12 and 13, but we've kind of outgrown it somewhat. So now year 12 have the run of this area. You also have responsibility for the fish tank and the fish in it as well. And in year 13, you have the Woodlands building, which has its own cafe, and it also has some of these dedicated workspaces. The traditions don't change. Right, so we still have a, you know, a long legacy. We have our time shield every year, which I think is possibly up on the wall. It usually is here. And you can see some of the trophies around the room. And our house system's really important. That doesn't change. It's just in the sixth form, you get a chance to lead on some of those things. Perhaps you'd like to be a house captain or a vice house captain and to try and get some of your, you know, younger students involved. So I want to talk to you briefly about combinations. Don't worry at the moment about choosing your subjects. You do not have to do that until January. But we will give you advice on different combinations. Depending on what you want to do, and there's a spectrum of I know exactly what I want to do to haven't a clue, and most people are somewhere down here, so don't worry. Um, you may need certain requirements for certain subjects. So if you want to do medicine, you have to do A-level chemistry. There are other subjects that go with those, and I'm going to show you the picture nationally in a minute, of course, you don't have to follow the trend. You can choose three completely different random subjects, but you will need to think quite carefully about what do I want to do with those subjects when I finish? If I want to go on to university and do engineering, I'm going to need probably maths and physics to do that. So we've got a range of things, popular ones. If you're interested in sports science, physiotherapy, perhaps something like that, you might be looking at biology, PE, uh, psychology. There is some overlap in those courses. Humanities subjects, you can seal on the bottom. We also offer classics and politics, which are two new ones at A-level. There are lots and lots of students that want to do business. It's actually the most popular course in the country at university. And we do largely follow that trend. You'll see our destinations board at the back, which shows all of the different places that our students go. But lots of them choose business. You can't do business and economics together. And that is because universities have told us that it is too narrow, right? So that's one, one thing where we have a sort of requ set requirement where you would do one or the other. But there are lots of other things that you can choose to complement it. Um, 
You can also see on there art and media, um, the care profession. So we do offer at the girls' school health and social care, but there's also sociology, psychology, and they're useful for lots of things. So if you want to go into the police force, for example, it's perhaps useful to have some of that background in sociology. And just as a, an aside, I mean, I'm not a languages teacher, so this isn't a plug for them, but languages are viewed extremely highly. And we're one of the few sort of consortiums that is able to offer three languages at A-level. Um, so if you're interested in that, please go for it. Don't worry that and think, well, there won't be many people or I'm not sure how to do it. They're viewed really highly and they're great things to do. So these are some of the new topics or the new subjects that we're going to offer this year. There's quite a, an interest in sort of investigative, more practical side of science. The sciences are really, really popular. But they're not for everybody. They're, they do have requirements. You have to get at least a 7-6 in your um, combined science to be able to do it. And everybody should have a chance to study some science, I think, if they want to. So we're going to offer a single award, which is a certificate in investigative science. But we're also going to offer a double award. And by double award, I mean the equivalent of two A-levels, which will be in uh, forensic and criminal investigation. So that's something which is new this year. We'll also be offering the, uh, the BTEC in sport, which is a slightly more practical element. So again, maybe A-level PE is not for you. There is a chance to still be involved in some sport. We will offer a single BTEC business, which uh, we also have an A-level in business and A-level in economics as well. And German, which isn't a new subject, but does run depending on numbers, we're hoping to launch again. So lots of opportunities and new things. Just wanted to show you a little bit about the national picture. Um, this one on here shows you the number of A-level entries by subject. This is 2019. And you can see up here, you've got maths, which is somewhere up there, about 28,000 students. Um, it shows you the combinations of what they study it with. So most popular, sorry, 28,000 for chemistry. Most popular subject to go with maths is chemistry, then physics, then biology, and so on and so forth. It doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but it's interesting to see what other students across the country have. If you look at the difference on the other side, so the scales are not the same on there, you can also see that geography, you can see the subjects are much more mixed. So if you are um, thinking of studying geography, of course you can study it alongside maths and further maths if you want to, but it tends to be more of a mixed picture. I've put at the bottom the link to that if you want to look up. There's a lot of drop-down data that you can see um, in your own time. These are the most popular combinations nationally. So biology, chemistry, and maths, not particularly surprising. Um, maths is very popular in a boys' school, and lots of students will go on there. We often have very sort of full, large maths groups. But if you don't get to do maths, there are other opportunities to kind of enjoy your maths. It crops up in geography. It crops up in the sciences. It comes up in psychology as well. So that's something you can have a look at. Just want to talk to you briefly and, you know, excuse me if you already know about this, but about the difference between BTECs and A-levels. A-levels tend to be more academic subjects. You will often need particular A-levels to go on to certain courses, but not always, while BTECs tend to be more vocational and practical. They can still both lead to university. A-levels will give you a broader base if you're not sure what you want to do. But depending on how you mix them and how you choose your different subjects, you can get a broad base from your BTECs as well. But they're more focused sometimes on a particular career path. A-levels are almost always assessed at the end of a two-year period. Some of our A-levels, A-level geography has 20% coursework, some of the others do, but they're linear exams, which is found at the end of it. They are a more, BTECs are more continuous workload all the way through. Are they easier? No. Okay, this is quite a common misunderstanding. It depends on the kind of person you are. I've often found that boys will leave everything to the last minute, and I don't want to pigeonhole you here, this is just in 20 years of teaching, and then they will work and they will cram as much as they can for the exam. Sometimes that works for you, but there is also the opportunity to do work where you work through a topic and then you're assessed on it, and you work through a topic and then you're assessed on it, and you might find that complements your other subjects quite well. So BTECs, they're not the same as GCSE and A-levels, but they're still rigorous qualifications and they're worth having. Can you study them at the same time? Yes, absolutely, you can do. Between 2014 and 2019, there was a very big increase of people going to university who had a mixture of them. 
So if you want to become a nurse, you might, for example, take a health and social BTEC alongside an A-level in a science subject. We can talk to you more about this. We'll do individual meetings with each student if they want them um, so that we can really unpick what it is that you're interested in. And this is something from the University of St. Andrews. So a prestigious university, more than happy to accept BTEX as part of their, uh, part of their university offer. OK, almost done. Thank you for your patience. Um, these are just some examples of the most popular subjects which are often mixed with BTEC. So people who take A-level psychology, very likely to take a BTEC. Might not seem so important to you now. Nobody's expecting you to digest all this information right now. But you might want to come back and have a look at some of this. OK, so to come to our sixth form, we want it to be as inclusive and as welcoming as we can. It's not for absolutely everybody. There are some things we simply can't offer you. If you want to become a car mechanic, we don't have a garage on site. I'm afraid you can't do that. But we have most things. I would be surprised if we can't find something which, is, you know, in, which interests you. So you need to get five grade four and above, including your English and maths. What happens if you fail your English and maths? Well, hopefully you won't. There is an opportunity to resit. English and maths is really, really important, and you shouldn't leave school without it. But it does mean you would have to do it in addition to your subjects that you were doing for A-level. So work really hard at all of your subjects, but English and maths are very important ones. The final thing I just want to talk to you about that we'll be launching either this evening or possibly tomorrow morning is the website where you can find all of this information. You can get it on your phones, you can look at it on a tablet, you can find it on a, a normal PC screen, um, and those links will take you to it. If you're looking at it on a phone, it looks something like this. So you will see there's the video which you've already seen right at the very beginning, straight into Hitch and Boys, and you can see it will take you to the individual parts of it. There's then little tiles for each one, which gives you more information about the subjects. So shameless plug here for A-level geography. If you're interested in that, there's the course overview. This is a video which is done by the head of faculty. You've also got information that takes you to the specification. Now, I'm not expecting you to read all 150 pages of a specification for geography. However, if there's certain things that you want to learn, you need to check that they are actually taught on the specification and that we do them. Lots and lots of subjects will have different options. So if you really want to learn about the Cold War in history, but you find that we do civil rights, you need to check that beforehand. And that's where you're going to need to talk to your subject teachers about things. But there'll be lots of chances to do that. There'll also be videos on there from students who are actually doing these subjects. So we haven't primed them and told them they had to say certain things. They're fairly honest videos, and they'll tell you a bit about what it's actually like, why they enjoy it, maybe some of the things they don't like so much. So at the bottom of it is um, a chance to look on the prospectus. The prospectus is the magazine which shows you all of the different information about the three schools. So you will be able to find that on there. This is fairly important because it shows you where things are taught. And I hate to break it to some of the lads, but you won't necessarily be able to choose all your subjects at the girls' school, all right? Um, we will only move you to a different site if the subjects don't work here. Some of them are taught across the consortium. Philosophy and ethics, for example, is taught half here and half at the Priory. The languages are taught across the consortium. But if we can slot you into subjects which are taught here, then we will try to do that. This gives us the chance to build a timetable around you and what you choose. So, how can you support your son? Try and engage them in conversation, if you can, about the things that they enjoy doing, the skills that they like, rather than just saying to them, well, I think you'd be interested in A-level maths. I know it's difficult, and I'm sure I will do this with my son, to say, well, I think you should, you'd love A-level geography. Of course, you'd, I'd enjoyed A-level geography. You're, they're not the person who's going to be doing it, or you're not the person who's going to be taking it. So it's really important to try and avoid that if you can. Talk to them a little bit, you know, are you interested in kind of number crunching? Are you interested in um, being a bit more creative with things? Obviously, you all know much of this already, but it's good to have those conversations. Try and talk to family and friends. You know, it doesn't have to be within the family, but extended family, friends, but in terms of careers. 
What sort of things do people do? How did they end up in that career? A job for life is not really something which we have anymore. Well, probably most of them are in teaching, I would think. But people will change their careers maybe 10, 15 times. So it's important to have a bank of skills. Try and avoid steering them. I know that this is difficult. And look at the website together. You don't have to pour over everything. It's something that you can come back to. So just to finish off there, what happens then now in terms of making your choices? Not until January, when you've done your mocks, we come back after Christmas, and we will have a big sixth form launch. We'll have a marketplace activity in the hall where you'll get to go to all of the different things and talk to the students and the staff about how to do the subjects. Then you will come and you will do your choices, and you will click on the links for things. And we will come back and show you this again. The form looks like this, just to give you an idea of when you actually come to it. And the final slide is just the timeline of what's going to happen. So you can see here at the moment, we're really working towards focusing on mocks. Don't start thinking too much about, I want to do this particular subject right now. See how the mocks go, all right? You may surprise yourself. You may do a lot better than you think. Hopefully, you'll put lots of work in and revise hard. In January, as I said to you, there's going to be a really big launch, something kind of cheesily called I Love Sixth Form Week. Um, everything sixth form. I'm sure people will get fed up with me saying the word sixth form. And then as we move through January towards the kind of spring and summer term, then you'll really lock down your choices. Most common question that people ask me, can I change? Yes, you can. But generally speaking, I find the people who stick with their choices now find sixth form a bit easier. Right? Don't be a mystery shopper that just wants to try out every single A-level course, because it will be very confusing and difficult for you. But yes, of course, if you start the wrong course and it's not for you, we will help you. I hope that you will consider coming back to sixth form. Talk to our sixth formers. I'm not worried about what they will say to you. All right? I'm not very worried about what they will say to you. But I think that you will really, really enjoy it if you come back. And obviously, we're here. Come into the office any time. Come and see us, talk to the pastoral team, Mr. Wilson, Mrs. Powell, and then we also have our administrators as well. Thank you for listening. I'm hoping that I'm finishing dead on 7 o'clock.